Great, fantastic. I think we'll make a start. So welcome everybody to the penultimate webinar of the year for Bankers Almanac Financial Counterparty KYC. We've done a series of these this year, showcasing our roadmap, showcasing the features, the, the products that we've launched within Bankers Almanac. So the format's going to be very, very similar. Next slide, please. So I am Dalbus Hota. I am the Senior Director of Product Management covering all of our Bankers Almanac portfolio based here, here, here in London. Akin, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Akin Fake. I'm a Senior Product Manager leading our Bankers Almanac KYC portfolio. Brilliant. Next slide, please. So just by way of agenda for today, we are going to cover a pit stop, a bit of a look through on the roadmap that we have for this year. Akin's going to take us through a series of demos around the latest, greatest features that have been developed over the last year. And then we're going to do a Slido interactive survey with your participation. So appreciate your participation in that survey. Series of questions that will help us with our design and development of the, the product model map for 2024 and just gives us some insights in, in how we can really improve these sessions going forward. And there'll be opportunity for Q&A. So there's a there's a QA and a box on the, on the, I think on the right hand side or your left hand side of the screen. Pop your questions in there as we proceed through the webinar and we'll take some time towards the end to answer those questions. Next slide, please. So just as a bit of a pit stop, um, this is the fourth webinar that we're having this year to showcase our roadmap, to showcase our features. Uh, what we've been able to do as part of our overall transformation journey on Bankers Almanac over the last few years is really deliver value to our customers every month. So value by the term, by terms of aspects in the product that you want improving, new product feature launches and enhancements to the overall product. So since 2020, October 2020, we've had 37 consecutive releases each month since October 2020, which is fantastic to see in terms of the speed to market that we deliver and the value that we deliver to our customers uh, overall. And this year thus far, we've already had 10 customer facing releases in 2023, delivering our roadmap overall to you all as customers across the globe. And the, the, the significance of the picture in the background is the number of people in this organization that make that happen. So everybody from UX design, product managers, engineers, QAs, marketers, sales, customer support, pre-sale. There's a whole team around this product making that value happen on a monthly month to month basis. Next slide, please. So as you may recall from um, the series of webinars that we've delivered this year, this was our roadmap for 2023. So our North Star, the vision that we are shooting for and aspiring to deliver on as part of the roadmaps year on year is to be the market leading compliance data and document exchange for regulated banks and PSPs. And we think about customer value based on feedback and insights that we've got from customers across the globe, really in around four categories. So one is providing that frictional exchange of data. Two on the left hand side there is the AML risk insights and alerting. And then fundamentally that response back to net promoter scores that you contribute to as users, as buyers of the product month to month. You say we do that's part of our aspects of value in the roadmap. And then finally, we like to do a bit of customer discovery and experimentation with new features, new designs to enable the, the product to evolve over a period of time. So please to share those three items that you see, the three big um, green boxes in the middle there, customer messaging system, Wolfsburg questionnaire insights, the Wolfsburg digitalized data, those I would describe as our sort of killer features that we wanted to deliver uh, in terms of value to, to customers across the globe. All three, very pleased to say we've delivered those over the course of this year and Akin's going to take you through some of those um, 
as part of the demo session he's going to run. We've continued to evolve the product, not just in terms of those three items, but all the other ticks that you see. Drawing our attention to a couple, the data quality MI, so the insight into you know, the data quality, how fresh is the documents within our product. That is something that you see in the resource pages. That's something that's been delivered. And then bank rankings, we've had a couple of iterations on um, over the course of this year. And then equally, the regulatory view enhancements, um, which you'll see today as well. So great, great roadmap. Uh, we delivered on larger parts of it. Still a few areas to deliver on this year. And then in the next webinar series, we will be sharing our 2024 roadmap. And we expect that to be in the beginning of the year in 2024. So we are working hard to deliver on the remaining parts of 2023 roadmap. And then in the background, in parallel, we're working through and have been working through planning on our 2024 roadmap. Uh, and believe it or not, we've been doing that since August. So eight months into year, we already look into 2024 based on your insights, our insights into the market to deliver on value for 2024. So I'll, I'll park some questions. Do please ask questions in the questions um, box and then I'll look to answer any of those associated to the roadmap. And if you have any for Akin, uh, we can cover those off as well. But I'm going to hand you over to Akin to go through the series of demos for today. Thank you, Akin. Thank you, Dal. I'm very pleased to um, be presenting to you today um, some features um, that we've delivered this year. So I'm going to kickstart the demo session with um, the demonstration of the customer messaging system. So as you can see on the on your screen here, the customer messaging system is a, a tool we've developed essentially to enable our users to be able to communicate and share documents, insights and information as they conduct counterparty due diligence. Now, the way we've gone about this is we've launched the initial sort of MVP, um, which is enabling our users to be able to share documents, sorry, to be able to share messages um, between themselves. The next iteration of this would likely be the sharing of documents. So why is this important? Um, there's a, a pain point, which is a lot of our users and customers have um, problems identifying and contacting the right personnel when they're conducting counterparty due diligence. So what the customer messaging system does is it provides you with the right contact to reach out to when you're conducting due diligence. For example, if there's some information that you want to ask for and that isn't something that is normally um, part of the core procedure of conducting counterparty due diligence, i.e. some passport information uh, or some, so, some other types of um, information. So what you can do is through the customer messaging system, reach out to the institution to um, essentially request that information. So there's a concept of a, um, an authorized responder. And um, so this is a designated authority of the bank you're reaching out to um, that you can essentially get the information you require from. So that, that enables that you won't have delays in terms of conducting your um, due diligence checks. And essentially we are delivering that value to you in terms of helping you save time and helping you save um, resources as well. So I'm going to switch um, to my um, to the web app now. So that's the KYC web app, um, and I'm going to show you what it looks like in the web app. So you should see my screen now. Um, this is an organization that's been set up on my account. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, where I can show you essentially um, the customer messaging system functionality. So this um, Ogia Corporate Finance Limited, it's a fictional um, institution and essentially I can't message myself. So that's one of the core features. It's only used for communication externally. So what I'll do now is go to the messages um, and I'll show you a message I sent um, recently. So that's a, a message um, that I sent and um, it's a conversation with another entity. Um, and basically you can see the, the flow of messages. 
There's also information here around the expiration of the messages. So essentially, if there's no communication between the two parties for a period of 90 days, then it automatically gets deleted. It's also encrypted, and so there's no way we even we can see the messages shared between the entities. So it's encrypted end to end. So it's only the two parties communicating with each other who would be able to um, essentially um, see um, the messages. So that's the customer messaging system. Um, what I will do is um, share with you some other features as well. Um, sorry, next slide, please. Um, Okay, so this is the um, UBO um, and ownership feature, um, which we continue to enrich. Essentially, this is a key um, feature for us um, because in the marketplace, we stand out when it comes to ownership and UBO information. We have a UBO um, chart a, and ownership chart, which is very detailed. It goes down to a level of 0.1% in terms of the level of ownership um, that you can view. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so what I'll do now is also show you what it looks like in the web app as well. OK, so I'm just going to search for an institution which I can use to show you the ownership um, information. OK, so I've just typed in Bank Rosia. Um, it's a bank in Russia, and I will, you can see here um, at the very top of the page, there's the ownership tab, which has a number of options to view and query ownership information. So the one I'm going to go to now is the ownership chart, which is very detailed, and um, you'll be able to see that now. So this is the entity that, um, that we're having in focus, and you can see the breadth and depth of information here in terms of the um, hierarchical structure um, laid out for you know, our users here to um, view the ownership information. It's a lot of data, um, but it can be drilled down into. Um, as you can see, there are filters here for you know, UBO flag sanctions, SOE, and you can also add the percentage um, of ownership that you want to query here as well. So what I will do is um, find one of the um, UBOs of this entity um, so I can show you some information related to them. So there's this gentleman here um, and I'm just going to select, as you can see here, there's a tab um, here that says S, which um, denotes that there's a potential sanction match. So if I select it and you can see there are several matches here um, which I can query for that. But for the sake of time, um, I won't go. Actually, let me select one of them so you can see the breadth and depth of information laid out here. So yeah, there's the potential sanction match um, and the record details here, including um, um, applicable dates. So I'll also show you here um, other types of um, risk ident identified here. And um, so there's the PEP and um, politically exposed person. Uh, potential risk uh, match, um, and you can also view further information related to that. Again, for the sake of time, I won't be able to go into um, the details. And also, there's the adverse media and enforcement uh, match, yeah. And similarly, you can view further information related to that. So I'm just going to pause um, and, you know. Just in case anyone has any questions, um, please let me know. Um, but in the meanwhile, Simon, if you can switch to the next slide, then I can demonstrate the um, next feature, please. So if you have any questions, um, pop them in the chat. Great. Thank you. So the next feature I'm going to be demonstrating to you, as Dow mentioned earlier, is um, the digitized Wolfsburg questionnaire, which also has the um, Wolfsburg questionnaire insights model. Now, what this is, is we 
as you know, the Woosberg questionnaire is very detailed. It contains a lot of questions. There's over um, 100 um, questions in the questionnaire. And for any KYC analysts, um, head of KYC, or anybody conducting counterparty due diligence for their um, customers, um, to go through that number of questions for over a thousand um, entities um, can be painstaking. And what we do is enable our users, we take away that pain essentially as much as we can. And one of the ways we have done that is by providing the insights model um, for the Woosberg questionnaire. Essentially, what we do with this is we highlight areas where we um, think that our users should pay greater attention to when they're reviewing the Woosberg questionnaire. And this is based on logic that we've developed and we essentially highlight the sections within the questionnaire that they should pay greater attention to um, from our point of view. What we'll do next regarding this in, in terms of the next iteration of it is we're going to um, highlight questions within those sections that they should pay greater attention to. So again, I'll go into the web app now to um, give you, provide you a demonstration of this. Okay, so what I'll do now is use um, another entity. I'll search for Barclays Bank PLC. Okay, so that's the entity um, I've selected to demonstrate this for you. And I'm just gonna go to the document section. So if you're not familiar with the web app, um, there's a document section here and within there we should find the Wolfsburg questionnaire and it's a second from the top so there's the questionnaire I can either view the questionnaire itself or I can view the digital copy so that's um, what Dal referred to in terms of the digitization of the questionnaire which we um, completed um, earlier this year it was so I'm going to select it And it's just loading. Just, just give it a few minutes, a few seconds, rather. Right? Mm -hmm. Seems my internet connection is slow, but hopefully it loads shortly. Great, it's finished loading now. So what you can see um, straight away is um, attention required here. So for a QIC analyst, if I was a QIC analyst, that would be something valuable to me from my point of view in terms of I can very quickly identify a section which I need to pay greater attention. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just recovering from a cold, so apologies for um, my voice. So yeah, so there's the section here where I need to pay greater attention to. Um, and if I select it, um, then I can you know, see that the section has been highlighted and I can basically spend more time here um, when conducting the review. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we're actually going to um, provide um, highlights of questions themselves um, in the next iteration of this. So that's the um, insights model uh, for the Wolfsburg questionnaire. Um, we how not just a data company and um, what we aim to do is to provide data insights and analytics and this is a way we're demonstrating that so um, we will continue to do that in terms of delivering value um, and delivering insights and analytics that would help you as our customers um, to derive the most um, value from our products and to ha have a delight delight um, a very good experience using our products as well. So I'm going to go to the next um, product demonstration. Simon, please. OK, so the next feature I'm going to be demonstrating to you now is the regulatory view enhancements and um, where we are highlighting to our customers and central banks and regulators um, 
at the very top of the page when you um, when you access the Bankers Almanac Web Lookup tool. We've also done that within other pages um, in the in the tool. So what's the you know why is this valuable? Um, essentially, when you actually when you're viewing some entities, they may appear as the central bank or as a regulator, um, but they may not actually be um, the the regulator or central bank for that country. An example of this is the Bank of India um, and the Reserve Bank of, um, of India. Uh, sorry, the Central Bank of India and the Reserve Bank of India. So the Central Bank of India, um, intuitively, you would think that that's the central bank of the country, um, but it's not actually the central bank, it's the Reserve Bank of India. So what we've done is highlight this um, within the products um, so there's no confusion and so you don't spend unnecessary time um, researching you know what the correct entity is that is the central bank um, there's also a need for our users to be able to you know contact such institutions and it'll be good um, to quickly identify you know the institution without spending a lot of time doing that okay so if I select Central Bank of India now, you can see that it's not the Central Bank. It's not been highlighted that it's the Central Bank. Whereas if I select the Reserve Bank of India, you can see it's been denoted here that it's the Central Bank. It's also the regulator um, for India. Okay, so that's um, it's in terms of um, those features. Um, so we continue to delight and uh, deliver delightful experiences um, to our customers, whether it's via our products um, or via you know our communication with yourselves. Um, when you reach out to us, um, it's our aim to continue to improve um, and to continue to deliver value um, to yourselves. So please let. Um, let us know if you have any questions um, related to any of these features. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, back to you, Simon. Thanks, Akin. Thanks, Akin. Appreciate that. Great demo, great demonstration of the customer problems that we've been hearing about and how we've responded to helping customers solve for that those problems with some of the great features that you and the team have brought to market. So we're going to take a, a bit of a pause um, now. We're going to go move on to the Slido. So um, um, if you could use your mobile devices just to bring up the QR code and go into an app and put in the code, um, that will be super beneficial because that will allow you to participate in a, in a series of questions that we're going to pose as part of the, the survey. So I'll give you 30, 40 seconds just to do that. And as I mentioned, this survey gives us feedback on the sessions that we've been running and equally gives us some feedback, critical feedback that will go into the development and design of our 2024 roadmap as well. So Simon, could we switch the Slido? Fantastic. We could maybe just zoom out. I can only see part of the questions. Just bear with me. I'll just try and get that. that sure. Active now. Thank you. We'll do a take two. We'll try again, eh? <laughs> Fantastic, Simon. Thank you. Thank you very much. You can still use the the slider on the on the left, the the QR code, um, if you're still wanting to get in. Um, but I'll I'll start working and reading out the question and put some context to it. So this is very much um, on the back of of customer discovery that we have heard, and RMAs, relationship management agreements, the SWIFT RMAs. Um, we see here a market problem. 
where many customers are challenged by doing the light due diligence, as I would describe it, um, covering RMAs. And what we're looking to do is to solve for that by creating a product. So we're just trying to get some intelligence from customers of what this really means um, in terms of doing due diligence, KYC due diligence on Swift RMAs. So for Swift RMA due diligence, you can please, please select the closest description of the due diligence being performed um, that you're performing today. And this is for the purposes of product development for 2024. So is your due diligence carried out at the entity name? So identifying the name of the entity, so bank ABC, the address of that bank, the board of directors associated to that bank, and then carrying out a sanctions and adverse media check on that entity name. Uh, number two uh, is really covering the. I uh, see what's happened there. <laughs> the 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 name and address and UBOs above ten percent ownership, and um, the final answer being it's everything um, from UBO ownership to actual ownership structures above ten percent. So the closest one, um, which your policy is to carry out due diligence for SWIFT RMAs. And all of the all the answers are anonymized, so we don't see who's answered the question. Again, this is just guiding us in terms of design thinking for the purposes of our product development. And if you don't wish to share, by, by all means, um, click that box and then it will just help me move on to the next question. Give it another 15 more seconds and we'll move on to the next question. OK, let's move on to the next question. So we've launched a series of features in 2023. Um, if you could maybe rank in order what has been the most valuable to you as a customer, as a user of Bankers Almanac. So one being the most valuable and six being the least valuable. So number one, customer messaging system. Number two, the central bag and regulatory flags. Number three, the advancements and enhancements that we've made on bank ranking export. Um, digitalized Wolfsburg questionnaire, the data MI, the data statistics that we provide in the product, um, the bulk document export. So these are all features that we've um, brought to life in the product, thanks to Akin and the team. If you could just force rank which ones have been most valuable to you, that would be fantastic. Let's give it another 20 seconds before we move on to the next question. And clearly there's no right or wrong answers here. It's all based on your feedback and, and your, your thoughts on uh, what we've launched. Give it another 10 seconds or so. OK, uh, we'll look to move on to the next question. So um, how would you rate our ability to deliver on the needs and feedback you have shared with us to enhance Bankers Almanac in 2023? You feel we have not met your needs and feedback. 
You feel we are partially meeting your needs and feedback. You feel we have met your needs and feedback at a satisfactory level. You feel we have partially exceeded in meeting your needs and feedback. Or finally, you feel we have exceeded in meeting your needs and feedback. Thanks for all the responses and um, we're going to give this question a little bit more time. And the spirit of this is all about continuous improvement and design thinking around our products. What can we do and how can we do it better for you? Uh, I think we've been exploring a number of ways to do this throughout this webinar, through custom discovery, through really capturing all that MPS data and feedback triaging it, synthesizing it for the purposes of making the product better and fundamentally to respond back to your needs and how you think we can improve the product, which is the fundamental reason why me and Akin really wake up each day and every day to think about how we can do better to improve the product for all of our customers that we serve in over 190 countries around the globe. going to give this another 30 seconds and whilst I do that um, if you've got further questions that you'd like to ask then uh, feel free to um, ask for those on the Q&A box um, that is represented in the in the Teams section of the call. OK, I think we'll move on. Thanks for all your inputs and answers in our Slido. So that concludes the Slido survey. Um, therefore, happy to open it up for any questions that you may have. So I've got a question come from the customer messaging system. So we saw, you may have seen some of the answers there. That was one of the top features of value. And the question is, uh, the customer messaging system is proving to be a great addition to Bankers Almanac. What do you see as the vision for this particular product and feature? So fantastic question. Thanks for asking that. Um, so the vision I, we foresee in terms of that feature is at the moment, it's a bilateral exchange of questions and answers. So ability to exchange messages and ask questions as um, as Akin demonstrated. I think for the future, it's going to evolve and we can see it evolving in a couple of different ways. So one way is it being more of a contributory mechanism into the product. So some of you may recall we used to have this contributory 
ability for customers to update their own data within the product. Um, I can see we can see it going in that direction. We can see it going in the direction where there's certain documents that we don't hold for um, pri privacy uh, and GDPR considerations. However, because this uh, messaging system is an encrypted messaging system between two parties, not us as the vendor sitting in between, we see it as an ability for those documents to be shared, which are not hosted on Bankers Almanac, but customers and, and banks across the globe would like to share between each other. Um, the third, the third area that we see this product going into is, I would say more expansively as, as a vision would be some of those insights that are being exchanged between two parties. Uh, there's potential for that data uh, and that, those answers, whether it's AML or KYC related or or alternative related uh, for that data to be published within the product and meaning the owner of the data would have the right to say, I would like this answer to be shared with the community of banks across the globe or banks only within this region. So these are some of the things that we think um, where this product will evolve to, um, but we're going to be led in our thinking and design by our customers across the globe. So as we mentioned already this, this year and what we've done in the last couple of years is you give us the feedback and we will synthesize it and basically seeing that as a value to a community of customers, we will deliver um, that within the product. So that's where we see the vision of um, customer messaging system going, but we will be led by our customers. Yeah, Great just question. To, just to add to that though. Um, so yeah, if you want to register, <coughs> excuse me, if you want to register um, for the customer messaging system, please reach out to Simon or Julia um, as we've commenced registration for it. Please reach out to Simon or Julia and we'll um, get you registered for it as well. And just to let you know, it's it's free. Um, it comes as part of your basic subscription um, um, in its current form. So yeah, just to add to that. Thanks. Brilliant, fantastic uh, additions, Akin. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see if there's any further questions. You mentioned is one coming through. You mentioned the 2024 roadmap. You mentioned we'll see it in January. Is there any early indications uh, of focus that you can give for 2024? So absolutely yes. So in the spirit of one of those questions in the survey, so we're looking at solving for how can we automate the KYC due diligence for SWIFT RMA agreements where typically there's a lighter level of due diligence required. So that's going to be one of the focus areas for 2024. Another focus area is going to be PSP data. So um, payment service provider data, MBFI data. We're going to bring that to, to life this year, um, but we're going to bring it to life this year within our API. And for next year, we're going to bring it to life within the web application um, that many of you use uh, alongside uh, the API. So that will be another key focus area. And then I would say thirdly, it's going to be focused on all the feedback that we get. So we're going to synthesize all of the feedback and we continue to deliver on what our customers and a community of our customers are telling us uh, across the globe. UBO, I think, um, as you've seen from Acking today, that's something that we're continuously looking to evolve, and that's going to be another area of focus. So what we've got in sort of what I would describe as R&D, research and development, is thinking about at the moment when you look at the products and how you search to identify UBO, it's based upon the banking question. What we're working on is a reverse of that. So you could search for a UBO and then you could see is is that UBO connected to one bank across across the globe or many banks across the globe? And if so, how many banks, which locations are those banks in? So we're trying to create a greater visualization when you search on a single UBO. Um, so that's going to be a, a focus area for next year as well. Brilliant question. I know somebody, somebody's trying to really get an insight into what we'll be delivering on next year. And as I said at the start of the call, uh, we'll be doing a call, a webinar in January 
and we will be sharing our 2024 roadmap. And then uh, as we've been doing this year, we'll do quarterly updates in terms of our roadmap and what we've delivered on our roadmap. So have a look at if any more questions. There's one. So you mentioned the API. Um, what is that and um, how could we get access to potentially use that? So API, it's a application program interface. So it's basically a bit of technology that sits in, in the back of many applications and essentially how applications and systems talk to each other. So there is an API for Bankers Almanac. And the purpose of that is um, really where you're doing KYC due, due diligence. Um, and you're doing lots and lots of due diligence. You have many correspondent banking relationships. You have many bank relationships and you want to consume our data, consume our documents in a very automated way um, and have that all driven in automation and putting it into your KYC AML platforms. That's the purpose of, of the API. Um, and you know, if you want to access that or you want to consider using it, then uh, I would suggest that you reach out to your um, account managers at LexisNexis Risk for Bankers Almanac uh, and have that dialogue with them. They'll be able to guide you in terms of what it is, how you could use it uh, and so forth. So that would be um, my recommendation in terms of follow up. And hopefully that gives you some insight in terms of what an API is and how some existing customers are making use of that. And the principal use case there is for greater efficiency and effectiveness. So um, instead of people capturing the data from Bam Bankers Almanac, that's automated. So the analysts can spend some, spend their time working on making better risk-based decisions as part of the due diligence requirements that you have and regulators have across the globe. Brilliant questions. Um, let's just see if there's any more. Uh, here's a here's a good good question coming through. You've mentioned design thinking uh, a few times. Uh, what is what is design thinking, and how is that relevant to Bankers Almanac? Uh, so design thinking is a product management technique, and it's really about immersing yourself and empathizing with customers to understand what is some of the work that they are doing as part of due diligence? How does that make them feel? How does it make them think? What are their goals in terms of the, the KYC and, and payments journeys that they undertake? What do they want to achieve? So all of our design thinking as a, as a technique for product management is really immersing ourselves to really understand what the customer needs are understand what the customer pain is and really empathize with that. And by empathizing it with that sort of challenge, the pain or the problem or the objective, you can really come up with some really fantastic designs to solve or to achieve those objectives, solve those problems, to solve that pain. So it's just a concept. It's a it's a it's a methodology when it comes to product management. And it's something that we that we do. And it's something that we take very seriously and something that we're continuously evolving. So you know, we, we now run experiments in the product. So some we put a product, product out there and customers use it. They tell us this could be better, this is good, and then we will we'll iterate it. That's all part of design thinking and iterative agile product methodology techniques. Um, best practice in industry, me, Akin and, and the team are big believers in this. Uh, because the customer needs are always evolving, they're always changing. And if we can del deliver with that agility, then we're going to be very, very close and continuously close to meeting or exceeding customer needs. Um, and as we saw from that survey, it's great to see that feedback. Really, really appreciate it. Really makes me and Akin feel warm, fuzzy and happy um, in terms of we are not only satisfying your needs, but we're in, in parts partially exceeding those, if not exceeding those. And that's the, that's the place that we want to be in, in terms of serving your needs, solving your problems and making your lives a lot, lot easier and really delighting your user experience within the product. 
I think that's all the questions that we have. Just going to make a final check. Brilliant. Yeah, that's that's all the questions for today. So I wanted to thank you all uh, for joining today. Thank you all for being part of our enhancements, iterations and product development over the course of 2023. Um, very excited for next year and I, I wish you happy holidays and some rest um, before 2023 closes and 2024 begins. So on behalf of myself, the entire Bankers Almanac team and hi LexisNexis Risk Solutions Organization, we wish you well and look forward to connecting in 2024. Thank you everyone. Thank you.